Lord, as for Diana set us free, we thank you that you are supreme, that you are preeminent, that you are the first, that you are the most, that you're the best, you're about everything. Bring blessing to us this day, in Christ's name. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Good morning, welcome with us. We're an incredibly uh, complex and simple uh, passage of scripture today. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be in Colossians chapter one, and we're going to pick it up in what do we say? Seventeen, Rich? Yes. Seventeen is new material. Yeah, we want to uh, get a running start on it, so we're going to uh, look at fifteen and sixteen as an intro to seventeen. Okay, go make for sure it. Make sure we uh, everybody gets that. And uh, we'll continue on from there. So, uh, yeah, so beginning uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, uh, and this is NASB, New American Standard. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, Jesus, <laughs> the very character, um, the essence of him, the uh, uh, who he is, and uh, what he is with regard to all of creation. Um, this is the grand perspective. So um, verse 15 begins, he is the image of the invisible God. We talked about this yesterday. He's more than, he's the image, yes, but he is the essence of God in human flesh. Amen. Okay, he is God in human flesh. Amen. The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Amen. Okay? Wow. So creation is his. Yes. In a word. Uh, and so we, uh, we have to keep that context in mind. That sets us up for verse 17. Okay? Colossians 1, 17 and ASB. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Come to have, it seems he has first place in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Period. And will maintain that position. 19. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. So uh, to all of you who think you just got everything out of this passage, you're wrong. <laughs> We're going, now let's, uh, let's amplify this by going into the Amplified Version, and we're going to start in verse 17. Um, and it's okay with me if we, um, if we identify Jesus in this. And he, Jesus himself, existed and is before all things, and in him, Jesus, all things hold together. He is the controlling, cohesive force in the universe. Okay, so some people argue that Jesus was a created being, but he's not a created being. He is the creator being, <laughs> and he existed and is before all things. So. We've talked about this before, but it's so cool that I'll say it again. People ask, what is the beginning of God? And that means they don't understand who God is. God created time. Time didn't create God. So God is bigger than time, not smaller than time. God owns time, and time doesn't own God. But the Lord Jesus was with the Father and the Spirit before all things were created. Like, before time was, before stuff was, Jesus was, yeah. and Jesus is and is. So he was before all things, and previous verse tells us he created everything. 
He he is supreme. He is he is so far elevated above us, and he existed before all things, and in him all things hold together. Yeah. He is the co controlling, cohesive force of the universe. Yeah. If you take if you take and you look at it with the resurrection, that if you take the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're taking the time element out of it. Because if you live forever, then then there's no time element. That's right. You know? So 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 if you look at forever, that's forever I mean there, there's no time. That's right. We don't understand that because we're looking at a death we were born yeah. and we die. Right. And if you take that element out of it, because Jesus Christ did, then you don't have the time element. You're going to live forever. There is, there's no end. You know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, I love that he's the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. Uh, you wonder why the, the second law of thermodynamics says stuff tends to fall apart unless acted upon by an outside force. Yeah. If you, whatever you're doing, if you don't, if you don't continue to make it better, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. So, but the Lord Jesus, this universe is not falling apart. No. This universe no. is, and and we think about the uh, how cool creation is in the sense of how cells uh, adhere to one another when you would think that they might bounce from each other. Yeah. But the Lord Jesus is the holder together of of all force in the universe. Rich, you can probably say that better than I did. The reason. <laughs> well, I think we have to keep in mind that he is a, a meek uh, being in that he is both human yep. and divine. Yep. Uh, and his, his purpose, his ministry, his purpose was to reunite uh, humanity with divinity. And the, he made himself that best tool to do that, to be both human and divine, so that uh, both could come together in him. Amen. So in that sense, he, he is uh, the one that hold, uh, holds the universe together and is... In his, in the case of his ministry, actually repairing the breach That's right. in the separation of these two aspects of uh, uh, divinity and humanity, separated by sin, he's the one to bring them together, so that he has um, the flesh, which which can bleed and die, which is the currency for paying for sin, to get sin out of the out of the picture, so that uh, a reunion between God and man can happen, and he has the authority of God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he has the authority to forgive sin. So that uh, with that authority, with that currency, he can repair this breach. And this is how, I mean, I think this is all background of what Paul, uh, this is what Paul, I believe, is creating this background to say. That uh, he created everything, he holds everything together. And his particular mission uh, on earth was to repair any breach, any separation between God and man by paying for sin and getting it out of the equation. That's right. So, and, and so often people disrespect the Lord Jesus by trying to say that he was just a man or that he was a good teacher. All of those things are... I mean, he was a man and he was a great teacher, but all of those just are so far below what he is and what he claimed to be and what he actually is. He existed before all things and he holds everything together. Like, that just bends my mind. I mean, this is, this is an enormously powerful and wonderful Jesus that we serve. This is not... Jesus meek and mild anymore. This is Jesus like, whom? Yeah. Let there be light. There was light everywhere. <laughs> Let there be. So, um, 
There's so, reference script, uh, scriptures through the whole Bible from the right. beginning, the Gospels here. I mean, it all goes together with this these verses. That's right. So he is before everything. Yeah. Like, like God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost lived in perfect harmony for however, for however, and then they created time. Yeah. Like, so, uh, and then, so there's people that try and diminish the work and the person of Christ, and they're wrong. He is, he is supreme. He is, he is Lord. He is the creator, the controller. Okay. Uh, I just don't have words. Um, <laughs> I just babbled on there, and I didn't even get to scratch the surface. It, it's like, it's like so amazing. The first time I went skiing, you go up on the lift, and you look out, and there's, there's these mountain ranges, and you're so far above the valley. You go, whoa, I don't even have words to say this. And then, and then you get used to it. But the, we don't want to ever get used to the Lord Jesus' um, omni-everything. Awesome. Uh, he is who he is and has been before time, before he created time. Okay. So that takes us somehow into 18. Verse 18. So Colossians 1.18. Um, are we doing an, uh, an ASB still? or We're in Amplified. 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 Yeah. Amplified. That's what we got. Uh, verse 18. He is also the head, the life source, and leader of the body, which is the church. And he is of the, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And there's a peculiar phrase. Yeah. So that he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything. Mm -hmm. What an, what an incredible, I mean, every time that Paul talks about the church being the body, um, it, it's a visual that just really strikes. It's just such a simple picture, the church is the body. Okay, therefore, there are different functions in different parts of the body, and therefore, but Christ is the head of the church. He is, he is... And when you think about, when you add culture to the body of Christ, as we do at Minkape, you have, you have different people groups bringing different giftings in different ways so that the body functions. Mm -hmm. And, by the way, if you're not bringing your gifting, then you're kind of cheating the body because uh, it is good for us when you're gathered with us as part of our church family. Now I understand health issues and stuff, but aside from that, if you're not there, that gifting that God has given you hmm. is cheating us. I mean, you're not there to do it. So um, Pastor. continue to pray, continue to intercede, even if you have bad health, there's, there's plenty you can do. But if you choose not to come together with us, then perhaps you should look at that at that theology and say, okay, well, I don't get anything out of it, but that's not why we come. We come so that others can be blessed by you. Sorry to cut you off. I, I, no, it uh, has to do with that. I was blessed. A 93-year-old woman with one leg walked easily a mile last Sunday to get to church. You, I don't think you were here. I wasn't. I gave her a ride home and, and exchanged numbers, and it blew me away that she walked with one leg on crutches well over a mile in the heat to get to church. Didn't want to miss it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Didn't want to miss it. And no. you think about that. In, 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 in Pilgrim and Puritan days, they worked six days in the field. The, 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 the Sabbath was holy to them, usually a Sunday Sabbath, but, and, and so they had to pile everybody into the, into the horses and whatever, 
I mean, if, and, and you brought lunch because you had to, you know, like, yeah. like if you're, if you lived in, if you lived in the north side of Dennis, and you were going to church someplace over there, it, it might be, it might be an hour walk yeah. or, or whatever every week. Yeah. And you had, and then they'd have a church dinner, and then they would have, so yeah. I didn't mean to tell this story, but I will. In, in that era of church, they were so impressed with the word of God, they didn't want to miss a word. Yeah. So they paid a guy to be a tithing man, T-I-T-H, I don't know, I-N-G. A tithing man's job was to rock around with a stick and a feather, a, a, a stick on one and a feather on the other, because they did not want to miss the word of God, that they would go, that if they started to see you started to snore, they'd poke you with it. <laughs> and you paid him for that because you didn't want to miss the word of God. And if you were female, they tickled you so that you didn't miss the word of God. Yeah. So, <laughs> so at different times, it's been incredibly important that the church gather as the body. Mm. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead. Now, some people argue with that, that they say Lazarus and other people were raised from the dead. Lazarus was indeed raised from the dead. He was four days in the tomb. But when he came out, he lived happily ever after until he died. And then when he died, he went on to be in glory with Christ his friend. But, but Christ died, and resurrected, and then ascended. Yeah. He is, it is never, from, from the beginning of history, that has never happened. Yeah. Uh, people have been raptured before Christ, that's true. But, but this is, he's the firstborn of the dead, meaning that he conquered death. And that we no longer need to fear death, and that he is resurrected from the dead as payment for our sins. And he will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything. So anybody, anybody in Paul's day that was trying to disrespect the position, the authority, the person of Christ, he just blasts them with this. Yeah. That this is... Christ, the Supreme One, the Holy One, the Head, the Creator, the Holderer, Togetherer, and everything. Probably do that better. Uh, like you want to, you want to limit who Christ is. Well, let me tell you who He is. <laughs> you can't. Uh, preeminent. Can I get a, a little understanding on what the, sure, the preem word? So, if you were. Uh, if you were a visiting ambassador, you'd pull up in your limo, and you'd walk up to the front, and everybody would stand in your presence, and then yeah. you would be most important, the most important guy in the house. Okay. Uh, if you, uh, if you were, so we see preeminence in terms of the first, the most important, the, the uh, like, like the Lord Jesus never saw it to get the best seat in the house. Yeah. He deserved the best seat in the house. But, he was. So, and he, he deserved it. Yeah. And he most often got the best seat in the house, but not because, but, so preeminence is uh, the most, the most important person in the room, okay. the most important person in the world or in the church. He is, he is the supreme one. He supreme is. Supreme and be preeminent in everything. Now I kind of, yeah, yeah, that makes makes great sense. Now. Okay, let's try 19, Rich. Verse 19. For it pleased the Father for all the fullness of deity, the sum total of his essence, all his perfection, powers, and attributes to dwell permanently in him, the Son, and through the intervention of the Son to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Okay, so this is, this is even more astonishing, well, I don't know, equally as astonishing as the, all the other stuff. 
The Father says that all of the fullness, all of the fullness, all the fullness of deity that is in the Father is in the Son. Mm -hmm. So when we think about the, the fullness, my well, little tongue, tongue is betraying me here. We think about God being all-knowing. That is in the resurrected Christ. We think about God being all-powerful. That is in the resurrected Christ. We think about God being all good. That is in the resurrection of Christ. So whatever attributes, whatever character the Father has is in the Son. And, and it doesn't displease the Father that the Son has equal, equal standings and equal elevation, as, and the Spirit too, as in the Son. He is the sum total of the Father's essence. And he is well, ah like for the for the Jewish mind and for the Greek mind, the, this is a mind-boggling sense that 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 one person, Jesus, who we know also as deity, um, could have all of the attributes of the Father in one body. It's just like whoa. Uh, Unbelievable. Of course, he laid some laid them aside when he was on so earth, so that he could fulfill his mission. Yeah, yeah but they were he, there. I mean, when he was on earth, the same. Yeah. when he was on earth, he laid but, some of these aside. But when he's back yeah. in glory, it is it is his glory. Yeah. I mean, it is his it is his right. It is his it is position. Sure, when he was on earth, he yeah. chose to lay some aside some of his glory, which is also mind boggling. Why would you give up the, the, the essence of deity to come to earth? Well, because you're 100% man and 100% God, but part of his God attributes, he chose to lay aside. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we can love him even more. Yeah. That, it didn't, that he didn't come... In, in the Greek this mind... This is what the, makes what he so amazing. Say again. This is what makes his grace so amazing. That's right. That he would that he would uh, take this step to reunite God and man mm -hmm. by paying the sin debt of man, yes. taking it upon himself. The debt was man's, one hundred percent. The yeah. word reconciled here uh, pertains to men needing yeah. reconciliation to the Father. That's right. Father did not have to reconcile himself. The father mm -hmm. didn't sin, uh, nor did the, nor did Jesus. Uh, the sin is not on their part. Uh, the uh, sin is on man's part. So it's man that has the deficit that sin creates, the de indebtedness that that sin creates, and that indebtedness had to be paid in order to uh, fill that gap between uh, men and men and uh, God. Yeah, Amen. And um, so, uh, but Jesus took it entirely, it was entirely volitional on his part. And these yeah. were decisions that were made before the foundation of the world. That's right. It was understood. There were going to be gaps in, yeah. our, in the relationships between men and God, and something had to be done to, uh, to fill them. He, he uh, made, he make couldn't him. just wave a magic, magic wand and, and make, uh, make that difference go away. Yes. But if you do that, Words start losing their meaning. Yeah. What is what's the difference between good and bad? Or if, if you do bad and Secret somebody just says, "No problem," no, there's more to it than that. You got to make up that the debt that 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 evil created. That's right. And that's what Jesus did with the with the cross. He filled in that that debt. Let's let's sum this. Let's go into New International and read seventeen to twenty. NIV. 17, yeah, okay, Colossians 1, 17, NIV. He's before all things, and in him, in him all things hold together. It's an interesting science study there, if you want to drill down on that. Just ask yourself, why, do, <laughs> why, do, why don't atoms collapse? Yeah. You've got positively charged nuclei surrounded by negatively uh, charged uh, electrons 
why don't the electrons just crash into the into the protons yeah. in, the, in the nucleus and collapse? Yeah. There's a force there. They call it like there are lesser and greater forces there, but that doesn't explain it. It just labels it. Yeah. Labels what's going on. <laughs> the question is, where did that force come from that literally holds atoms uh, in their uh, in their shape and gives them the chemistry that they need hmm. to make to make all things? Yes. And this, to me, speaks to that right there. Amen. In him all things hold together. That's verse 17, 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead. Interesting statement. Do you think of birth coming from death? In his case, yes, because this is, this is what resurrection is about. Amen. A life that was lost, coming back to life. Yeah. Yes. Okay. First born from the dead. And that's what it means. It's not. It's not the kind of resurrection they say resurrection for Lazarus, or uh, uh, Jairus's daughter, or the son of the widow, and so forth. That was much more like a resuscitation yes. than a yeah. death, because those people died again. Yes. But first born, first born in this instance means. Not just coming back to life, right. but entering into a permanent yeah. life, Amen. resurrected, and with an upgrade, life 2.0, <laughs> upgrade, <laughs> and everlasting. Yes. That's that's a big, big difference from simply a resuscitation, uh, yeah. such as Lazarus, Lazarus experienced. Uh, and same will hold true when it comes to judgment. Yeah. People will be raised for judgment, that's just a resurrection. I'm sorry, that's just a resuscitation to get through judgment. Uh, ju uh, judgment. Once uh, the judgment is whether or not you have the faith, because that's what it says in John 3.16, those who believe in Jesus enter eternal life. Mm -hmm. And those who don't, the implication is they perish. Yeah. So. Uh, have to be clear. So that when I'm talking about the firstborn here in 18, the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy, yeah. that resurrection power gives him supremacy. Verse 19, for God was pleased to have all the fullest dwell in him and through him to reconcile, there's that word, yeah. to himself, right? He did, he he put he made the reconciliation happen, it was really our shortcoming, our sin, that caused the need for reconciliation. But he took it upon himself to make that reconciliation happen uh, for all things, whether things on earth, things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. It was his blood shed on the cross that made that reconciliation happen. Amen. 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 So if you ponder on this every day for the rest of your life, you still won't get it all. But no. every time you ponder on it, it enriches your understanding of who, who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is. Lord, we thank you for this powerful picture of your supremacy. We would ask for your blessing in our lives that we would live abundantly because of what you've done for us and through us. Transform us, O oh Lord so we can live like you want us to live, joyously in a loving relationship with the creator of the universe. Have your way, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord God, for the rains that fell last night, Lord God, and this morning, to water the crops. I thank you, Lord God, that you sent us <clears throat> your son to make peace with us, and me personally, Lord God, I thank you for the forgiveness through him, Lord God, that someday we will be connected and be <clears throat> there with him again, Lord. I thank you for the opportunities to praise him, Lord God, and lift him up, to be with you, Lord God, and to be with your people. I ask that you bring healing to all the sick that are amongst us, Lord God, and be with us in that peace. That peace, Lord God, give us understanding and help us to understand your word. Give us wisdom, Lord God, 
from our wrongs and our rights. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you again for your, for your instruction through this word here that we come to understand it's all about you. Everything was created for you, by you. you. You had a hand in it all. And it was redeemed by you, yes. for you. And we are the happy recipients of that reconciliation and say with all gladness and thanks, all power and glory to you, Lord, yes. now and forever. Thank you for your precious love in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day, y'all. Blessings.